Coming up on this edition of This is Jersey, we sit down with several bishops from the state of New Jersey to talk about the Catholic faith not only in this state, but around the country. We'll be back right after this. Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're down in Baltimore today at the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Annual General Assembly. Once a year, all the highest ranked members of each U.S. Catholic diocese gather together to discuss issues and affairs within the church. We had an opportunity to sit down with three of New Jersey's bishops, two incoming and one outgoing, to hear about their experiences as leaders of the faith within New Jersey and beyond. Up first, Cardinal Joseph Tobin, the newly appointed Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Newark. Our viewers are very interested. This announcement came not too long ago, and we want to know about our new Cardinal-elect. I understand you're from Michigan. I was born in Detroit uh, about 40 years ago. My family fled the country because there are 13 of us kids. We lived in half a duplex in Detroit. We had a little farm over in Canada that we would work in the summer. So my dad and I built a house that would be big enough for all of us there. And our, my 93-year-old mom still lives there, and. Some of my siblings are still in Canada. Most have come back to the States. So do you have dual citizenship? No, no, I, I actually have dual citizenship, but with, in Ireland. In I, Ireland, I, okay. A, so tell us about your ministries. Well, I, uh, fresh out of the seminary, my province of the Redemptress, I should say that I, I belong to a religious order called the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, or the Redemptress, We're, who are present in Newark, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, so in 1979, after I finished my theology, I was sent to uh, work in parishes in the Midwest, but principally where they had Spanish-speaking populations. So I, I did that uh, in Detroit, Chicago, and, and then was sent over to Rome, and which was my address in one form or another for the next 20 years. Now, I read that you speak five languages and can read many more. You know, enough to get, on the good days, enough to get thrown into jail, maybe not enough to get out. But I, I can, yeah, I can get by in. Now, what did you do in Rome? Well, in Rome, for 18 years, I was in the leadership of the Redemptorists. Okay. I was six years as, as an assistant to the Superior General, and then I was twice elected the Superior General, two six-year terms. So 18 years. Then we religious orders generally throw the bum out, and... Uh, I had begun a sabbatical. I had uh, a fellowship at Oxford in England, and was trying to read a book, and I got a call from uh, the you Vatican. To read a book or write a book? No, read a book. Oh, read a book. So you didn't <laughs> have time to do that. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not good enough to write books, but I, I was reading one, yeah, a couple actually. And uh, I got this phone call telling me to come back to Rome. The Pope Benedict XVI wanted me to uh, work in the Holy See. I was ordained uh, a bishop in 2010. I was already working for the Holy See and, and because of my position I was named an archbishop. Okay. Although I didn't have a real diocese anymore. The, nice. My diocese has what's called a titular diocese. Hadn't had an archbishop for uh, since the seventh century. Okay. So I was in Northern Africa uh -huh. near where St. Augustine came from. Uh, I did. I worked in the Holy See as an Archbishop for a couple of years, and then uh, Pope Benedict asked me to go to Indianapolis. Okay. And I was there as the Archbishop of Indianapolis, and which is the Metropolitan See, like Newark is right. for Jersey. Uh -huh. For Indiana, Indianapolis is the Metropolitan See. Did that for four years until uh, October 22nd. The nuncio called me and said I was to move to uh, Newark, New Jersey. Now, I read that you were shocked that you were asked to come to Newark. Is that really the case? I, I was, you know, because I, I, Pope Francis, you, I don't think, likes to move bishops around too much because he really wants you to be close to the people. And by God's grace and the goodness of the people, I was very close to the, the folks. Uh, you know, we, our archdiocese there embraces 39 counties. So I spent a lot of time in the car and uh, Got to know the people there and love them. Right now, Newark and Indiana, or New Jersey and Indiana, two different worlds. Uh, 
And you, I read also, I heard that you hadn't been to Newark in, I think you were only there once or twice, is that correct? In, in the city itself, in yes. The city of I, I think when I was the, the, the leader of the Redemptress, I spent time at St. John the Baptist. We weren't in St. James yet. Okay. So I was at St. John the Baptist. Uh, interestingly enough, when I was elected the Superior General, I was elected in New Jersey because uh, the general chapter or this worldwide parliament that we have every six years met at West End or at St. Alfonso Retreat yes. House. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, it was a, a, a really big event in my life that took place in New Jersey. So what do you take and bring from Indiana that you're going to employ here in Newark? Well, I think that uh, Indiana, Indiana, one of the differences that we had in Indianapolis was we're a, definitely a minority of the population. We're only 11% of the population of the state and really the archdiocese is only 11 percent of the total population there. We were a growing church. Growing for two reasons. First because of the arrival of new Catholics but also because the lay people themselves across the archdiocese welcomed newcomers. So um, I was there for four Easter's. At each Easter we welcomed right around a thousand, eleven hundred adults who were baptized or who were uh, received into the church. RCIA. The profession, uh, RCIA yeah. Or the profession of faith. So um, it, it, one it convinced me is, you know, I, when people say, Father, pray, pray that it's not going to rain today, we're going to have a picnic. I always say, I'm in sales. I, I, you've got to talk to management yourself, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, I really believe that the church to be vibrant and evangelizing depends on the quality of life in the parishes. And so I think that's one thing I'm going to look at and, and try and promote. Secondly, because we were spread out so much, I, I, I often said to my people, part of the challenge for us is to move from being an archipelago, which is, you know, as you know, is a bunch of islands, to a network so that you know, each parish could maintain its, its unique characteristics, but they're related, you know, and they help each other, and they share resources. But you know, I know, having worked in big cities, sometimes city life can be kind of anonymous. You know? and, and I know where, where I grew up in, in Detroit, people would say, well, where do you live? You never named uh, you know, the street, or you named the parish. And I'm sure it's the same in Newark and Elizabeth and Jersey City. And well, I've talked to some of your friends in Indiana, and they're going to miss you there. So we're glad to have you in Jersey. Thank you so much for being here. Good luck in all that you do, and hopefully we'll have you back. Thanks, Gary. And thank you for watching. We'll be back right after this.